The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 13. Particularly, this verse as a theme of our message for today. 1 Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 13. They have no temptation taking you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye able with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. God bless you. Amen. It says uh, there is no challenge that we are going through now that is not common to men all over the world. There is no challenge we are going through that is not common to everybody. Okay? So today we're going to be looking at uh, how to overcome our challenge on, in this earth. How to overcome our challenge, or our challenges, or our temptation. The Bible says temptation. You know? How to overcome this challenge. That is what we're going to be looking at today. Our challenge or temptation can be can be loneliness. Okay? Loneliness, rejection. It can be rejection. It can be sickness of the body. It can be poverty. It can be barrenness. Okay? It can be whatever Satan has brought upon us can be referred to as temptation or challenges. But what we must understand is that the scripture has told us, and tells us, that whatever challenges we are going through now, we should not allow that challenges to mislead us. Don't allow your challenges to mislead you. Okay, you are sick, or you are looking for money, or you are poor, don't go to Satan. That's what I'm saying. Because no matter what Satan gives you, you must pay dearly for it. You see what I'm saying now? The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 10, 22, it says, The blessing of God make it rich and add no sorrow to it. But the blessing of Satan, okay, make you rich, but add sorrow to... So, whatever challenges we are going through, are you sick? Are you poor? Are you going through one temptation and the other? That you cannot even tell us. God knows everything. Whatever challenges you are going through, one thing you must you must put or keep at the back of your heart is that you are not going through that challenges alone. God is with, uh, is with you. No matter. Whether your pastor has abandoned you, whether your husband, your family has abandoned you, one thing you must be rest assured of is that God is always with us. Whether he's talking or silent, he's with us. In Matthew 28, verse 20, he says, I will be with you okay, to the end of the world. I will be with you. Me, I cannot say so. Moses did not say so. Abraham did not say so. No other person on this earth has said so. Only Jesus says, I will be with you to the end of the world. So, what is our challenge? Our challenge are not meant to destroy us. Our challenge are meant to improve us. Okay? Our challenges or temptation are not meant to destroy us, but to improve us. Listen to me, my people. Our faith as Christians, okay, is tested 
okay, and grow in the soil of temptation. When you want to tell us you have faith, it is not when things are good. When you want to tell us that you have faith, it is when things are tough and things are rough. Our faith grows and tested in the soil of temptation. Any Christian that have not experienced poverty, since he become a Christian till now, that means he's a bastard. Okay? God does not use worthy people or worthy persons. God uses ordinary people that have had experiences, that have something to say. So whatever challenges we are going through, one thing I must understand is that God will never allow those challenges to consume us. Listen to me. I repeat, no matter the temptation you are going through, God will never allow that temptation, that challenges to consume us. The difference between us not push and start Christian the way you are practicing in this country. Push and start with empty brain. Okay? I mean, we Christian who understand Christianity as it's supposed to be, when you are going through challenges, just know that that challenge is not to destroy you, it's to improve you. It is through challenge our faith grows. It is through challenges, okay, our promotion from God comes. comes. It is through challenges that God get to know whether we are his sons or we are bastards. Two challenges. Any man of God who says he cannot seek, such man of God is fake. We have the spirit of God, but we are living in a clay body. That body can be tired. That body can be afflicted. That body can seek. Okay? But for anybody to stand up, he said the way they train you, somebody will come and say, I never sick before. Me at the sick oh. Last week Thursday, I was sick. I was still praying for you. I'm your part Thursday. I was still praying for you. That was not me. I was sitting in the house. So when any man of God say, Hey, I don't sick. I can never sick. It's a liar. That means the man of God does not kiss his wife. He does not go to the toilet. He does not bath. Okay. He does not do anything. He does not cut his finger. Does not do anything. That is this Christianity you are exposed to is a false food. Okay? Come and hear the real Christianity. But the way a man are, they, are, they, they are teaching you, if somebody will tell you once you are born again, once you are born again, it is you just nothing again. Just go and enjoy. This Christianity you are being taught is fake. Being born again does not stop you being poor. Or to be sick. Okay? That is why many of us are now lazy. You go and close your shop and go and stay in the church for seven days and be praying one kind of fake prayer. Why are you supposed to be in your shop? Many Christians have become lazy and poor because of this, okay, this false hold they were exposed, they were exposed to. I preach what is the Bible. So that when you go back home or you leave this church and then they are saying it somewhere and then you will remember what I taught you. It's not this first school that we are exposed to. It has to stop. Christianity has made so many people to become poor because of the way and manner they were taught. They were groomed up. They became lazy. You stay in the church for seven, years, seven days, 20, 16 days, being vigil. Some of you to be in your workplace. What kind of religion is our? So, no matter the temptation we are going through now, one thing you must understand is that that temptation is not to destroy us, it's to help us, okay, to groom us, to make us have stamina, 
okay, to withstand any other problem or temptation that will come again tomorrow. Temptation can never end. Today you testify of having a tomorrow arm robber come and snatch the cancer away. Today you testify of having a job. Tomorrow somebody in the same job will sack you. So temptation will never end. It's a continuous process. One thing you must develop is the stamina, okay, to withstand any temptation that comes in the process of time. That is real Christianity. That's why in Luke chapter 16, verse 8, Jesus tells us that those unbelievers are more wiser than us who call ourselves Christian. Luke chapter 16, verse 8. He say, unbeliever are more wiser than us. You can see your, your ladies here, your ladies in Christian. They will fast and fast till 39 years. After they have fast, their breasts are fast, they are put up out. And there is no marriage. They will now begin to go from one place to the other. Is that knowledge? That's not knowledge. That's not knowledge. Instead of us to expose our members, okay, for the knowledge of Christ and faith in Christ, we are exposing them to personal doctrines, which has never helped anybody to build the capacity Okay, for them to sustain, to, for, for them to, that they need to sustain themselves on this earth. That's why any small thing you will see Christian man will, will, will fall out of it. Those who are going to have money today, they are Christians. Many of them are Christians. Those who stop going to church today, many of them are Christians. Because they have seen that what they were exposed to is different from what they are now going through. So they rethink. And many of them are going to where? Because of you. The Christian lecturers. So how do we overcome our challenges? Number one, you must, you must understand that challenges, okay, are part of Christianity, are part of life. Challenges, okay, is part of our Christian life. Challenges is part of life. We cannot run away from challenges. That is what the first thing you must know. Paul was telling Timothy, he said, don't run away from, okay, from this warfare. He said, Christianity is a warfare. It's full of challenges. So number one way to overcome your challenge, okay, is to recognize the fact that challenges must come. Challenge is present always. It's a part of Christianity. Okay? God never tells us that you will not be sick. So don't let anybody, okay, boss you into a corner that wants to give your life to Jesus, you will not be sick again. No. God never tell us that when you give your life to him, you will not be sick. God never tell us that when you give your life to him, you will not go through accident. God never tell us that when you give your life to him, you will not be barren. He never tell us you will not be barren. Or you will not, not experience um, uh, unfruitfulness. God never tells you that once you give your life to him, oh, riches will come. God never tells you that. that. These things are the things we must teach our people. So that when they experience all of this, okay, roadblock and temptation, they can grow faith to conquer rather than giving out or giving up. Let's go to the book of Exodus 23. Exodus 23, from verse 25 to 26. And ye shall serve the Lord your God. And you shall serve the Lord. You can see now. And ye shall bless the bread. You shall become born again and serve God. Yes. And ye shall bless the bread. He shall bless your bread. And the water. And the water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Did God say you will not be sick? No, sir. He says, I will take it away. That's why when you are sick, 20 years, you come here on Thursday or Sunday, 
God uses me to take away the sickness from your body. God does not say you will not be sick. But what you guys are exposed to is that once you give your life to Jesus, you are not a rich man. No, I know you are a rich man. Okay? But then, that does not mean you will not experience poverty. Being born again is not a license, direct license to wait. Being born again is not, okay, it's not a direct license to go to the bank and begin to expect money in your account that you have not worked for. That is falsehood. That is falsehood. In John chapter 16, verse 33, it said, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace, because in this world you have challenges. Jesus says so now. So, he says, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you may have peace. Because in this world, you will experience challenges. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17, it says, For our little affliction, which is but for a moment, get for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Okay? For our little affliction, affliction is part of our Christianity. It's part of our life. One thing we must understand is that most of the time, God himself allows affliction to come to test us. To test us. To test our faith. So when you are going through temptation or any challenges in life, what you must understand is that ask yourself, has God permitted this affliction or these challenges? If God has permitted it, or even though God does not permit it of the Satan, what you must know is part of our life. Because he has told you in Matthew 28 verse 20, he said, I will be with you to the end of this world. So when you are a Christian, that's why God says, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the perfecter of your faith, not looking on to man. So that is the first way for us to overcome our challenges. You must, you must face the reality of life. You must face it. The reality of Christianity or of life is that challenges, temptation is part of our life. That you have stomach pain today does not mean it will continue forever. Today you might not have stomach pain, but tomorrow morning you wake up, you have it. Maybe because you eat in your dream. It's an affliction. It has to come. But you must accept that this is an affliction. Accept this affliction. And this is a challenge. That is the first thing. The first way to overcome our challenges in life. The second way, okay, Second one to, act, to overcome our challenges depends on how we see it and the name we call it. How do we see it and the name we call it will determine our next level. Okay? The second way to overcome our challenges and temptation depends on the way we see it and the name we call it. You know, when you when you magnify your challenges above God, already you are finished. When you magnify your temptation above God, already you are what? You are a failure. You cannot win the battle. Let's quickly open our Bible to the book of Numbers. Numbers 13. Number 13. Can you go to 31? But the man that went up with him said, The man that was sent, okay, to go and spy up, spy up a place. Okay, God told the people of Israel, He says, I'm giving you the land of Canaan. Go and look at the land first. Go and look at the land 
and see that what I was telling you is the truth. How good is the land flowing with milk and honey? That is where God said they should go and spy. But when they got there, it was exactly what God says. But when they saw there, they saw, okay, people that are look like giants, very heavy guys. They saw long, long sword in their hand. They saw how tall they are, just like you now. When you, when you have HIV, you have that. It's the same HIV that killed David. You see, hey, are you sure me too I will not die? The same sickness that killed David, HIV. Oh, I will not die. Are you sure this cancer will not kill me? Okay. Are you sure this problem will kill poor man? All of these, the same thing that happened to these guys here. Can you continue that verse 31 for me? Verse 31. Is but that? the men that went up with him said, Yes. We be not able to go up against the people. He said we cannot conquer that place. For they are stronger than we. He said this sickness. Now go kill him. Any of you that open your mouth and say it is not easy. Numbers 14, 28 say it will not be easy for you. Any of you that open your mouth and say I'm a poor man. The Bible says you'll be poor forever. That's what I'm saying here. That's why I told you now, I say, don't allow your challenges to mislead you. Don't allow your challenges to change your manifestation of your talk, your confession rather. Don't let change it. Keep on. Don't waver. Don't stagger. Very soon, you can see in this place, when demon do like this, leave him, leave him. I'll say leave. Let him come and beat me. You come like this. Don't be afraid. When he charge, just wait and be looking. Because these demons, they always want to harass you. Why do they want to harass you? They want to put fear, okay, in your heart. When the pains increase, fear will come. What kills those people that have HIV is not the HIV. It's the fear of uh, HIV. With this sickness, <coughs> when I survive this sickness, already you have lost the battle. You can see what they said here. They said, But the men that went up with him said, We'll not be able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than us. Okay? This is how you two are brought up. Because these people passed through the Red Sea. God opened the Red Sea for them. God brought water from the rock. Okay? God gave them food to eat. These small human beings, the same God that divided the Red Sea to two, he said, I've given you a place. Because you see a giant man there, he said, hey. those people, they are very strong. Go. Mm. They are giant too. We are not able to capture them. So, what did they now call their problem? Let's go to 33. Verse 33. What did they call their problem? Their challenges. And there we saw the giant. And there we saw the giant. The sons of Anna. The son of Anna. Which come of the giants. Yes. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. They say we are like grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. Yes. And they were what? They said you are giant. So, how do you overcome your challenges? Number two, it depends on how you see it and the name you give to the problem. If you say, hey, this problem will kill you, already you have submitted. Why Satan is, how do you know that your problem is about when the pains increase? Just wait. You will fizzle away. That is one way to know. That your problem is about to be solved. When everything is so hard, so rough, just wait. You know, just wait for a time. Wow. Solution comes. So you can see these people now. Let us see what God now told those guys that say so. Okay. He says, I'm reading, let's go to the book of uh, Numbers 14, from verse 20. 
And the Lord said, Yes. I have pardoned according to the word. Yes. But as truly as I as I live, as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Yes. Because all those men which have seen my glory and they have, seen, they have seen glory. Okay. Because all those men which have seen my glory and, miracles, and my miracles. Yes. Which I did in Egypt. Which and I in the did wilderness. in Egypt. Yes. And I've tempted me now. And I've tempted ten me. Yes. These ten times. And I've not hearkened to my voice. Surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto the fathers. You can see now. He said they will not see the land which they went to spy. The same giant will keep them before they get there. Whatever you lifted above God is your God. Okay? Whatever you magnify above God becomes your God. That's why when you, when you value your gold and your chain and your money okay, above God, that means you are an idol worshiper. I repeat, when you value your chain, your cash, your money, your dollars, above god you become what i don't yeah so you can see what god now said to those two people two of them two of those people who have saw the miracle of god says the same god that divided the rest into her to, for us that same god can kill this man if we believe him if we are fetching him he can kill this man for us Let's see what God says about them. Yes? Neither shall any of them that provoke me see it. But my servant Caleb. But my servant Caleb. Because he had another spirit with him. Because he had a spirit of God in him. And had followed me fully. And had followed me fully. Him will I bring into the land where into. He will I bring into the land which he has went to spy out. And the seed shall possess it. Can you go to 24 of that same chapter 14, verse 20, 28? Say unto them. Now go and say to them. As truly as I live. As truly as I live. Say the Lord God. The Lord. Say, say the Lord God, yes. As ye have spoken in my ears. They have said to me, I hear them saying that this problem, now go kill me. Okay, so go and tell them. Say the same problem. Then go. Uh -huh. So simple. So, some of you, the challenge you are going through now, you are the cause of, you are the cause. You are just calling your mother a winch. Okay? I hate people calling their mother a winch. Some of you, what you are going through now is what you have used your mouth to plant in the past. So go and tell them that whatever they have said, that is what I will do to them. So, how do we overcome our challenges in life? Number two, you must, okay, understand that to overcome is based on how you see this problem and the name you call it. Is your problem a giant? If it's a giant, it's going to swallow you. Is your problem a grasshopper? If it's a grasshopper and you see yourself as a giant, you are going to swallow the grasshopper. That's what I'm saying. It's so simple. I never believe in my life that I'm going to live and die a poor man. I never. Okay? I never believe in my life. And that motivated me to do whatever I'm doing in life. Any small thing, because you are a Christian, your background is so porous. Any small thing, fear, fear. If my father has gone to school, if my mother has sent me to school, I will not be illiterate. When you see somebody giving excuses all the time for not becoming something or not be able to do something, on more morning, such people, I like these people in Numbers 14 and Numbers 13. So that's why in this church, 
you are you are youth to hear you complain. Okay. So for us to overcome our challenges, this is very important. It is based on how you see your challenge and the name you call your how to come our challenges of temptation. Number three, in the midst of challenges, don't lose your peace. If you lost your peace, you have lost the battle. When you lose your peace, you have lost the battle. Okay? Let me tell you what you must know before you leave here today. God does not answer the prayer of frustrated people. Okay? God does not answer the prayer of a discouraged servant. So much also, God does not answer the prayer of a frustrated uh, Christian. Because you are poor, you are frustrated. Anything you want to pray, if they say pray for not to be rich, you want prayer, God bless me. I want to be rich, God bless me. If they say your son is sick, God bless me. God give me money, God give me money. If they say pray for so so, say God bless me, give me money, you are frustrated. God will not answer your prayer. There's a time for everything under heaven. Time to pray for money. Time to pray for others. Time to pray for spiritual growth. There's a time for everything under heaven. 1 Samuel chapter 12, 23. He said, if you pray such prayer, you are a sinner. There's a time for everything. Okay? Under heaven. Every time you don't pray, pray, pray. No, no, no. Use knowledge. That's why Jesus says, the unbeliever are wiser than us. Because the way of man we manifest foolishness. When you look at what Jesus tells us in that John chapter 16, he said, these things have I spoken unto you, that in me, you may have peace. Without peace, no solution. Without peace, your prayer can never be answered. Okay, when you pray in fear, it says, Though I walk to the shadow and the value of death, I will fear no evil because it's with me. Because it's with me. So, the third thing to know on how to overcome our challenges. Is that in the midst of your challenge and temptation, maintain your peace. Let's go to Hebrew chapter 10 from verse 35. Hebrew chapter 10. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence. You can see now. We shall say, do not cast away your what? Confidence. Your confidence in who? God. In God. Do not cast away your confidence in God. In God. Yes. Which had great recompense of reward. Which have great recompense of reward. Yes, continue. For ye have need of patience. You see, you need peace. Patient. That after you have done the will of God, ye may receive, you the, may promise. receive the, the promise. Continue to read, please. For yet a little while. For yet a little while. He that shall come. The man that will come and marry you or help you out will come. Will come. I will not tarry. He will not tarry. Yes. Now that just shall live by faith. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure. No in pleasure him. in him. You can see now. So the third thing to do to overcome our challenges in life. Is that no matter the temptation, okay, no matter the challenges, maintain your some of you lost, okay, you you couldn't get to America because in the means of asking you a question in the embassy, fear came upon you. Okay, fear came. You know, 
these people are psychology. Most of them are not spiritual. When they see you begin to fear, say, you want to go on, you want to hurry up. Smile. It's not God. If it's the will of God for you to go, you will go. Nobody can stop you. What you must ask, okay, if you are going through these challenges, is it the will of God for you to continue or not? Lamentation chapter 3, 37. He said, who is it that said you will not go to America? Except God said no. Who is it that said you will not marry? Except God said no. Lamentation 3, 37. You have five blood. They said you will not have baby. Go ask God. God. They said I have five blood. I will not have baby. Isaiah 53 verse 1 and 3. He said the doctor report is correct. But there is a final, final report. Which must come from God. Somebody was brought here. They said, go and cut his breast. And I look at it spiritually, and God says, this person will be healed of this cancer of the breast. I said, go and bring the person. They said, let us cut the breast. I said, no. Don't cut the breast. Because what I'm hearing is that this breast should not be cut. God that gave you two breasts does not say you will cut it in the breast of time. Okay? That is a plan of Satan. Why you allow them to be caught to be caught because you lack faith. And then we prayed, and then the breasts became more better than the one they said they were not even caught. So, is it the will of God? If it's not the will of God, nothing that man can do if actually you are a Christian. And you know in your heart that you are a Christian. I'm not a Christian in the hotel. I'm not a Christian in the beer parlor. I'm not a Christian in gossip. I'm not a Christian hating others. Hatred, manifesting hatred. I mean genuine Christianity. Let all of you stand up and fire me arrows. Straight to arrow. I'll be laughing. Because... I'm still hearing God who sent me from Lagos to this place say, I, I'm still with you. I have not left you. The fourth thing to do, okay, to overcome our challenges in life is that in the midst of these challenges, we must ask ourselves, what is the way out? Okay? In the midst of your challenges and temptation, ask yourself, what is the way out? Can we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 again? Yes. There are no temptation. Yes. Taking you, but such is common to man. Such is common to man. But God is faithful. God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able? Who will not suffer you to be tempted? Yes. But with the temptation, yes, will also make a way to escape that ye may be able to be in the midst of temptation. The Bible says there is always a way out, but the question is that are you being submerged with your temptation, or you have been submerged in that challenges that your eyes are blind, you cannot see the way out. Okay. In every means of temptation, God always makes a way out. And that way out is nobody else than what? Than Jesus. John chapter 14, verse 6, it says, I am the truth and the life. So Jesus is the way out, is the way out of every challenge, is Jesus, not us. Without Jesus, Nothing we can actually achieve in life. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 9. He said, By man's strength, eh, shall no man. Eh. The fifth way to come out of our challenges is by having 
is by on the basis of constant faith. Okay? Your faith must be constant. You must not be staggered. Let's go to the book of Proverbs 24, verse 10. Proverbs 24, verse 10. And then we'll go to Romans chapter 4, from verse 17 to 20. If thou faint in the day of adversity, yes. thy strength is small. If your faith is staggered, in the means of in the means of your challenges, you're already a failure. Your strength is uh, small. I told you that three type of faith: small faith, strong faith, and stronger faith. So let's go to the book of Romans chapter four, verse four to seventeen. As it is written, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Made, yes, before he in whom whom he believed, yes, even as even God who quickened the the dead, the dead, yes, and called those things. Which, which be not. not as though they were. Verse 18, yes. Who again so believe in hope? Who they say, oh, yes, believe in hope. That he might become the father of many nations. Yes. According to that which was spoken. Yes. So shall the seed be. Yes. And be not weak in faith. Be not weak in faith. He considered not. It's the same thing that is there. If your, if your faith is weak in the means of challenges. Your faith is uh, small. That means you cannot overcome. You must maintain a constant what? Constant uh, faith. Okay? And being not weak in faith, yes. He considered not his own body now dead. You see, you see, the problem we have is that we believe so much in our problem than solution. That's just problem we have. We believe much, we believe so much, so much more, okay, in our problems than solution. Solution does not, okay, it does not behave, it does not harass you. It does not harass. It is your problem that harasses you. Solution comes in a very soft manner. Keep on telling you, don't worry, you'll be okay. You'll be okay. Cool it down, okay. Don't worry yourself, you'll be okay. That is our solution. So, but when you lose sight of that that admonition, that word, what you'll be hearing is what is your problem talking to you. Be not weak in faith. Yes, he considered not his own body now dead. He does not consider that it is now. Is, is now monopause. Yes. When he was about an hundred years old. Hundred years old. Did I hear the deadness of Sarah's womb? Yes. He staggered not at the promise, promise of God. True unbelief. But was On strong Thursday, in faith. Last other Thursday. I was so strong. So strong. I still pray for you till two o'clock. Do you want to survive in the means of unsteady world? This world is like this. In the means of unsteady world, don't allow the wave to carry you. Be, st be stable. Okay? Because when they carry you out of the panel, they can take you to another panel. And you might not like that place. That's why in the midst of your challenges, don't allow your face to stagger. Remain focused. Remain purposeful. He has told us. He said in the midst of our challenges, is with us. He will not leave us. He will be with us to the end of the age. When I was in Yetiri, it seems that no money again to go to school to pay my school fees. Okay? I was stable. I was laughing. I was stable. I was laughing. In the midst of this, when you stable and it is to stagger, help will come. God will just raise a pass from nowhere. God bless us.
Call plus 234. 803, 846. 3326 to book an appointment with the Son of Man today.